So here we have the Verni X review. Please excuse my voice. Uh, I'm a little bit chesty uh, the past couple of days. So I've got a really deep voice. So uh, do excuse my uh, voice through uh, the video. Anyway, you can get the Verni X for £188 on Gearbest. There are links in the description below if you want to take a look at them. They are commission based, so I will get a small commission. Okay, let's get into the review. Verney have yet again done a, a great job in terms of build quality and design, just like the Verney Mix 2, although the Verney X has uh, a metal back, a matte black finish, which looks very, very professional and very, very smart. Me personally, I prefer glass front and back, but that's taken absolutely nothing away from the design of the Verney X. Um, the back is nice and smooth and it is really a nice design. It does pick up fingerprints, but they do buffer off quite easily. The Verney X has a excellent screen, 18 by nine ratio, six inches, 2160 by 1080p. Some great colors, very, very sharp detail. It's packed with six gigabytes of RAM and 120 gigabytes of storage and also with the Helio P23 processor, the new one. It's also packed with a 6,200 milliamp battery and USB type C and charging the battery takes around about just over two hours to get it to full charge. The Verney X does have LED notification, which blinkers at the top. And it also has dual front facing and dual rear cameras. And both of these are real. There's no dummy lenses or dummy cameras in there at all. I personally don't think the, uh, the bokeh effect or blur effect really works that well. I've never seen a, a budget Chinese phone that really makes good use of that but uh, they have improved on the camera this time around compared to the Verney Mix 2. And one thing Verney have rectified this time around is actually using a decent image sensor. If you look on the device info down here they're using the Sony IMX258 whereas on the Verney Mix 2 the actual sensor was totally different to what, the, what they were advertising so they've corrected that. So I'm going to jump straight into the camera right now and I'm quite pleased with what Verney have done uh, with the Verney X. They have made slight improvements to the camera. There's better detail and there's better uh, sort of saturation in colours. It doesn't seem very dull as it was on the Verney Mix 2. Shutter speed is fairly quick as well outdoors and on the whole it is not a bad camera for a, a budget smartphone. Again in the evenings or in low light conditions there is a bit of noise and distortion that starts settling into the, the videos and pictures, but that's what you're going to expect with any budget Chinese phone now, I'm afraid. Unless you want to spell, spend a few more bucks or pounds, then uh, you're not going to see much of an, an improvement for low light conditions. But I am happy with what I've only have done on this camera. Oh, the Bokker effect dual cameras don't really work that well at all. It's just a gimmick for me. Have a look at these pictures and videos here and make your own mind up. Okay, so we have some outdoor footage on the Verney X. The colours are quite vibrant and um, there's definitely an improvement compared to the Verney Mix 2. Over the autofocus is a little bit too um, jumpy. <clears throat> There's no um, optical image stabilization, which they tried to say they had with the Verney Mix 2. I 
I think overall there has been a quite a huge improvement compared to the Vernier Mix 2. It's not amazing, but it's definitely an improvement. The Verni have improved the quality of the camera uh, compared to the uh, Verni Mix 2. The only problem now on this front facing camera is the audio is out of sync. So what I'm saying now um, will not be matching up with my mouth or any sort of movements like that at all. Um, and this has happened even after the update applied. Um, so this is a fix uh, that Verni X, so this is a fix that Verni must, must try and achieve. I don't know if anyone else has experienced the same problem, uh, but this is direct off the phone as well, even before I import it into any uh, movie editing software. That's a shame. But, uh, the... So I'm in low light conditions now, and there is a little bit of noise and distortion entering the video. You right, Colby? <laughs> <laughs> You're hiding. That is just testing the uh, the camera on the Verni X. <laughs> You're standing up. You're a big girl. Oh. Oh. You unsure? So another question mark over the Verni X was battery life and on the device info it does say power profile is 6200 milliamps which is great and if you take a look at these screenshots so taking the phone off charge it was off for one day and 18 hours so nearly two full days of use on one charge on the Verni X 6200 milliamp battery very very pleased with that screen on time I managed to squeeze out 11 hours and 7 minutes so again very pleased with the battery performance nice optimized battery also in idle mode or when the phone's in standby it was a 50% here when I went to bed I woke up in the morning and it was 47% so it dropped by 3% so you can say from the knowledge that the Verni X battery is a great performer so I'm going to jump straight into uh, GPS now. Uh, I didn't do my typical uh, recording or capturing of the uh, Google navigation while I was driving about, but um, I decided to use the GPS test uh, app. And I was obviously uh, using it as normal, driving to work and whatnot and driving home. And I can tell you the GPS is accurate. I didn't experience no issues with that whatsoever. But I took a couple of screenshots using the, um, the GPS test app as well. And I can show you that. So this was uh, while I was inside the car. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of satellites connected there with some good um, signal strength as well. We had a, uh, a 3D fix, the GNSS status, and accuracy was within four feet, which to me is fairly accurate. And um, Verni have improved because the GPS on the Verni Mix 2 was a little bit sketchy. So they've done, they've done a good job on that. This is indoors, um, of which obviously you can expect. Uh, the satellites have dropped down, the signal is good, and accuracy is around about 22 feet. But it's still decent. Not that you'd really need it indoors anyway. Favorite part of this phone is still the screen. It is absolutely stunning. I'll try and let you take a closer look at this. Uh, but the colors are great. Love it. Navigating through the phone has been um, has been all right. I've not experienced any um, lag or anything like that. Um, apps open up quickly, and getting around the phone is pretty rapid as well. So I'm on four G connection as well at the moment. 
and we have full strength power. So I'll run a quick uh, speed test for you. 4G on the EE network in the UK. Let's see what we get up here. So 15 down and 14 up. It's pretty acceptable for um, the sort of location I'm in. I'm not sort of really in a city centre where there are loads of aerials and stuff like that around. But that is a good test and I'm happy with that speed result. We can test the Wi-Fi for you now. Connect to uh, Wi-Fi. The Vernimix 2 did have uh, Wi-Fi issues that were reported. Um, like people would lose connection. I can tell you that um, Wi-Fi on the Verni X has been absolutely fine. So here we are. Um, yeah, that's fine. I only get around about seven meg at home anyway. And with and with Sky, I don't get fiber here at the moment, so I get around seven down and about a meg up. Not even that. But that is um, that's good. I'm two floors up as well, so I'm quite a distance from the from the router. Yeah, spot on. That's felt extreme. We have on better quality, so it's high visual quality. And I'm again using the iPega Bluetooth controller. Bluetooth connectivity with this device is absolutely fine as well. So guys, you can just watch me playing a a race on Asphalt Extreme. See if you notice any drop frames. I really haven't noticed anything like that since I've been uh, testing and using this phone. For me, this uh, Vernie X handles gaming absolutely fine. And the huge screen 18 by 9 ratio looks excellent as well. The gaming fills the whole screen. Whoa. Done. So if you watched my unboxing video, you would notice that I tested the fingerprint sensor and the face ID. This phone has both of those functions, but I quickly found out that you can't have both of them enabled at the same time. You can either unlock it with your finger or you have to go and again set the face lock up to unlock it with your face. So if I was trying to stick my face in front of it now, nothing happens at all which I don't really like why can't they have both functions active at the same time the fingerprint sensor works really well by the way and it is definitely accurate I mean the face ID is probably uh, more of a gimmick the security on there isn't uh, isn't the best it's not as secure as actually using your own fingerprint. But both work independently. You can use one or the other. And both do work pretty well. Fingerprint, a little bit better though. Let's take another look at the gorgeous Vernie X screen. This is some footage on YouTube. Zoomed in. Let's take full advantage of the 18 by 9 screen ratio.
Certainly a lovely screen, guys. Now, I have been very impressed with the Verni X's loudspeaker on this phone. A lot of budget smartphones, you do get a quite a tinny and sort of a thin sound, but um, quite a bit of thickness, a nice bit of low end to this loudspeaker. But the only thing that lets it down is that it doesn't go uh, as loud as I would like. But then again, if it did, it would probably sort of introduce some sort of distortion. But um, I really like the uh, loudspeaker on the Verni X. So this pretty much concludes my review of the Verni X. It is an absolutely stunning smartphone and Verni have made uh, some huge improvements uh, from the Verni Mix 2 to the Verni X. And design and build quality is one of my favorite parts of the phone. Um, it's one of the favorite parts of any sort of phone really. That's the, obviously the first thing you see, the first thing you sort of look at in terms of a phone and it gathering your attention. And this one certainly does, and it's excellent. They didn't need to improve on the screen from the Verni Mix 2. Um, the screen is very, very similar to what the Verni Mix 2 was. Absolutely on point, crisp, and some great colors. It is a beauty. They've improved wireless connectivity. I've had no problems with um, Wi-Fi whatsoever. The camera, like I said earlier, has had slight sort of improvements on there. So you will see um, a few more improvements on as far as the camera goes. But on the whole, I think Verni have done a very good job on the Verni X. It is slightly dearer than the Verni Mix 2. The battery life as well is a huge plus, a 6,200 milliamp battery. And you get a decent uh, amount of screen on time and, and some good battery life. If you're a heavy, heavy user, and doing lots and lots of gaming that will be reduced um, but you're definitely definitely going to get over a day's uh, use out of it absolutely so verni x is a huge thumbs up guys comment below any questions give the video a thumbs up uh, subscribe to my channel and i'll see you in the next one thanks for watching